Universal Studios Japan, a park filled with awesome attractions, Mario Kart, Yoshi, Jaws, and epic roller coasters. But that can be overwhelming, specifically with long wait times. So in this video, I'll be riding every major attraction at Universal Studios Japan. Yes, even the ones with long lines. All of this in two and a half days. But first, we need to get to the park. I live approximately 18,753 kilometers away from Universal Studios Japan, so we need to get there. First, a 12-hour flight to Frankfurt, so close to Disneyland Paris, yet so far. Another flight to Tokyo with all Nippon Airlines, then wait for the next flight and a final hop to Osaka. USJ has its JR station, so it's easy to get there. Then we get to the park, with tickets in hand, it was time to go in. The park was closing in 4 hours. Download the park app, it's the best way to stay up to date on wait times and other important information. And if you're planning a visit to USJ, I mean, download the app now, because you can get a glimpse of how the wait times will be when you visit and you can also look at menus in Japanese only. Universal Studios Japan has so many modern high-tech rides like Mario Kart, Space Fantasy or whatever it's themed to now, but there was one ride or show I had to see based on one of my favorite intellectual properties. Curious George, wait what? First ride in the park. But there was one ride that was almost the reason to go here, Jaws. Did you know that the ride originated at Universal Studios Florida in Orlando? Unfortunately it closed to become Diagon Alley and I never got to experience it. But here was my chance. And to this I have another tip, use the single rider line. USJ has the option for single rider in a few attractions, like Mario Kart, some of the coasters and Jaws. Check the app for the latest updates. Be aware that sometimes the single rider line closes for some reason. Jaws was awesome, there is no ride like it anymore and it's such a shame it had to close down, because at USJ Harry Potter and Jaws coexist for now. Next we went to Universal Wonderland. This area is home to some of Japan's most beloved characters like Sesame Street, Hello Kitty and the Beagle himself. You see, USJ has some different character licenses that include these properties. The Snoopy area was cool but it was a bit run down? some effects weren't working and most importantly the roller coaster had been closed since the start of the one that shall not be named so no kiddie credit the crazy thing about this facade is that this used to be a western area back in the day on what's now the hello kid facades was a western area with the wild wild west show and animal actors this later changed to an oz area with the wicked show however nowadays it is a sesame street land part of universal wonderland the wild west area will be missed as it features some very cool theming there is also a very kawaii restaurant with good food there. After exiting the area, we had a surprise. The park was empty, so we went to Spider-Man. It's pretty much the same as the one in Islands of Adventure, except the load area. Some rumors say this will become Pokemon, and the ride is scheduled to be closing down forever by the end of January. So be prepared if you still want to see this somewhat similar attraction at USJ. Next up was Minions. Now, I don't like this ride. Why? It replaced Back to the Future. We we lost Back to the Future the ride for some bananas. Minion Mayhem at Universal Studios Japan is quite different than the ones in America. Sure, the video is the same, but in Nihongo, the ride system is the same as the Simpsons ride. It is quite uh, interesting choice, because you get the super immersive scream, but the video is still the same as the Minions ride, which is quite disappointing, they need to update that. And after the park closed, now as you can see by the state of my face, let's sleep. And here comes the next tip, stay on site at USJ because it offers some on site partner hotels. They don't get the major benefits that you'd get in Orlando, but the main one is just location. I stayed at Hotel Keihan Universal Tower and yes, Park View. There were other options like the beautiful Park Front Hotel, there is also Universal Port and Port Vita if you like Minions, and the new Liber Hotel with some cool rooms, though that is located a bit further away. The Sesame me feel the cookie monster as King Tetsu Hotel and the Oriental Hotel it exists. It was time for day two. Yeah. 
USJ has recently opened Super Nintendo World, a super immersive land. However, you need a timed entry ticket to get in. You get one by either scanning your tickets after you enter the park, or you can enter the park earlier to get into Super Nintendo without one. And that's what we'll be doing. But how to get tickets? Well, you can use the official USJ website, which is obviously the first option. However, there is also the option for an agency. For instance, I use Kluk because USJ website wasn't accept visa at the time. You can download the Kluk app, which is super easy to use. If you click my affiliate link in the description, you'll find options for tickets. Be aware that I will be making a few bucks from it. If you are staying for one day, I do recommend the early entry plus one day studio pass, which allows you to get in the park before everybody else. I did not take advantage of this because I chose the two day option. However, if you're visiting for one day, I strongly recommend this one because you can't get early entry through the official Universal app. And also be aware that I'll be making money if you click that link. As the gates opened, we ran, I mean, calmly and safely walked to Super Nintendo World and going directly to Koopa's Challenge, the Mario Kart ride. Get ready because this is an awesome ride where you face off against Koopa's team. Just don't accidentally hit Mario, okay, like I did. Next up is Yoshi's Adventure, a very simple dark ride themed to Dinosaur himself. It's very kawaii this, but not worth a 25 minute wait. Next, get a ticket to have a lunch at Kinopio's Cafe. You need a ticket sometimes to get here and I recommend eating early because it also gets a long line. You can then explore the land with all of its beauty and you can also pick up a timed entry ticket to come back at night like I did. Be aware that if you leave the land you can't re-enter without that timed entry ticket as of now. And the USJ is like that as well. You cannot exit the park or else you need a new ticket to re-enter. However, if you have something very peculiar or special, please talk to the nearest team member. Kinopio's Cafe is the best quick service restaurant at USJ. It offers great food and cold drinks. At Super Nintendo World, you can also buy a power-up band that allows you to play many interactive games. If you get 5 keys, you can go up against Bowser himself or Koopa, whatever his name is. Though, be aware that this can get a long line and if you lose one of these challenges, you have to go back in line to do it again. Then it was time to hit smaller attractions and enjoy the park. USJ offers live shows like Waterworld, which is considered by many as the best theme park show ever. But there is also the Norimito Parade. When you visit, they might not offer it anymore, but it is one of the coolest parades ever. You have characters from Snoopy to Mario Kart and even Pokemon. This has got to be one of the craziest parade ever, and it's super cool. Next up was another attraction, Flying Dinosaur. This is a BNF flying coaster similar to Manta at SeaWorld. This ride has a very long queue, but you can use the single rider line to cut back a few minutes. However, it's still a 40 minute wait. Remember to store everything on the locker. And I do mean that. Some pieces of jewelry will also need to be stored in the locker. And I do strongly recommend you check everything so that you don't have to go back to the locker. Flying Dinosaur is a very cool coaster. I still think Velocicoaster is better, but that's not the point. It also goes around the Jurassic Park area, which is interesting. Unfortunately, you have these big nets that ruin the view. Unfortunately, this coaster kind of ruined the atmosphere of Jurassic Park because now there are these nets everywhere. Another great tip is eating in weird times, like 4 o'clock. Now that night came, it was time to guess what? Go back to Super Nintendo World. And at night time, it is a very cool experience. It's not Pandora level because sometimes these lights are really bright, but it's cool nevertheless. <laughs> Guess what? Back to Jaws and rewriting it until the park closed. That was another great day at USJ.
After an awesome breakfast, it was time to go in again. Universal has city walks similar to the one in Hollywood, but the food here is very different. USJ has a cool event that's called Cool Japan. It doesn't take place every time of the year, but when it happens, it celebrates anime. It includes re-themes of popular attractions like Supei's Fantasy, which this year became Doraemon to celebrate the new movie, which like they make 40 movies of Doraemon, what? Unfortunately, it has a very very long queue. So this was the ride that we were rope dropping. We thought of getting express for this attraction, however it sold out. Yes. Now, many people might ask, is express worth it? Well, my opinion is that if you are already traveling to Japan from really far and you are already spending the money, I think it's worth. However, if you live in Japan, it's not necessary. Using the express is a bit different here than in Florida. It works like a fixed price menu you have many options and they don't give you every attraction. Yes, some express menus, let's call them, give you for instance Hollywood Dream and other attractions while this other menu gives you Flying Dinosaur and it's very hard to get the two. The official USJ website didn't work so we had to use Klook of course which I'm making a commission if you click that affiliate link down below, okay? When the park opened, this time 30 minutes before the announced opening time, we had a chance to experience this VR roller coaster. It was a very good coaster, however, I would rather experience it without VR. Also, it replaced E.T., so it's eh. Next up, we watched a 4D movie about some manga I never read and never watched the anime of. With Express, you are able to cut the lines, but only on select times pre-assigned to you. First was Hollywood Dream. We rode both forwards and backwards. This coaster is everything Rip Ride Rocket in Florida isn't. Fun, smooth, and you get a beautiful view of the park. With Express Pass, you can get into Super Nintendo World with an assigned entry time. We were able to ride Mario Kart and Yoshi again with our Express Pass and explore the beautiful world of Mario. We decided to eat at the Joss restaurant, where you can eat an actual shark apparently, with a view of the awesome attraction. We watched the parade again. The cool thing about this parade is that it is interactive. It stops and everyone can go in and dance, which can lead to some funny moments where everybody runs. Next up is Harry Potter. This land features a long path because of Jaws, so you get this awesome review. It also has a lake. The ride is a, basically a clone of Florida, with some minor changes. But guys, I got the credit. Kitty credit. Coaster credit. USJ also had this temporary event with creatures like a hippogriff and uh, Barry the platypus. Shouldn't you be at Disney? and had early dinner at Studio Stars restaurant which was offering a super cool Doraemon menu and with that we were able to ride every major attraction at Universal Studios Japan except Jurassic Park because I wasn't willing to get wet. Universal Studios Japan is probably the second best Universal Studios Park behind Islands of Adventure. The way designers made this park more detailed than Universal Studios Florida is awesome. First, the magnificent front facade with a mixture of Hollywood architecture, Art Nouveau. Here is where you find all the shop. In Japan, it is covered and at night it looks really cool, but during the time it can be a bit dark. The facades here are much more detailed than in Florida. I like the detail that they are all facades of a studio. The studio side is also better. It has this beautiful art modern architecture and also the awesome Universal Studios Star Restaurant with this very cool mural showcasing the movies of Universal. The New York facades are similar but painted differently for some reason the colors are dark here in Japan. I don't know why. New York has Spider-Man until January with a Penn Station facade similar to how Confrontation looked before it became Mummy. Though rumors say it will become Pokemon and with T2 3D which has been closed for some time now being closed permanently, this area might face some big changes, maybe becoming, I don't know, Pokemon? They have this Minion area, which is somewhat coming to Florida, which if you're a fan you might like. San Francisco has a neat tea store, so that's pretty cool. Jurassic Park is the wiki link, I think. It's time for some renovations and they might be coming, I don't know. Maybe make the nets fitting better? And Waterworld now looks a bit odd with Super Nintendo right next to it. They are like 
completely polar opposite intellectual properties. The star of the park is of course Super Nintendo. It's super detailed, awesome, interactive and will soon be getting a Donkey Kong area with a roller coaster. All of Super Nintendo World, even the Donkey Kong area, is coming to the United States when Epic Universe opens, maybe in 2025. But for me the highlight was Jaws. Getting to experience this was awesome. They also have a restaurant there where you can sit and watch the boats passing by and of course we had to ride one last time. That was our last day at Uniba. But don't worry, if you can't experience everything, don't feel overwhelmed. This park can get quite crowded. Enjoy your time, sit down and soak in the atmosphere. Don't just visit Universal. O Osaka is an awesome city and this is my final best tip. Get out there and enjoy what Osaka has to offer, enjoy the people, the city, walk along the city's streets and live better. Now you can check out this video if you want to see Epic Universe and how it's going to look like. 